Hi everyone, I'm Lisa Allen, your host for HGTV series of Community Champions. Despite the distresses COVID-19 has put on all our communities, we are witnessing a universal generosity from financial donations to volunteering to those who are just sharing their expertise that might support someone else getting back on track. At HTTV, our focus is always on you, our community. And during this pandemic, there's nothing different. We are highlighting extraordinary people who are making up our great community all across the state and basically telling the story of what the best of humanity looks like during a difficult time. Thank you for watching and stay safe. While many of us are safely quarantining in our homes, there are many city officials working hard across the country to keep our towns safe. Today, I have Mayor Radis joining me to discuss what it's like being mayor during one of the most difficult health crises of our lifetime and how the virus is impacting the community, both emotionally and financially. Thank you so much for joining me, Mayor. It is so great to see you. My pleasure. Um, well, there's lots of questions that I have, but I, I have one really important question to ask first, because while you're a mayor, you're also a mom, you're also a family member, you're a wife, and I'm really interested in finding out, how are you doing? Because you're working endlessly, and I'm curious how you're taking care of yourself. Well, thank you for asking. Thank you for caring. Yeah. Um, I'm doing fine. I, I really am. Um, you know, it's, it's stressful. There are days when I wake up and just feel slightly overwhelmed with all the things that I need to accomplish and, and decisions that I have to, not only that I make, but also have to discuss with many of the council. We have a wonderful council and everybody's working really well together. Our city uh, officials, city workers, uh, from the communications office to the city administrator to the city clerk are just amazing. So I have a lot of support at the city level. So then you take it to home, right? And I have two children, uh, a daughter-in-law, and two grandchildren, um, one of whom- All in one house? No, no, my, 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 my son and daughter-in-law and the babies live in their home in New Providence. Um, but my daughter, who lives in Hoboken, is, is living out with us. Um, but the, my youngest grandchild, is my grandson, uh, John, was born on March 12th. Um, so just recently, of course, we, we could not go to the hospital. Um, he was born at Overlook, but my son was able to go, and, now, and we were happy to get them out of the hospital and home, and, and everything is well. Um, they're great. My husband's home, not working. Um, my daughter is the only one who's bringing home a paycheck. Uh, she's working remotely. So I think it's not an unusual situation where if you're the wife and the mother, I'm not thinking about myself first. I'm, I'm wondering, you know, how's my son doing? He's a restaurant, works in a restaurant, so he's not working. Mm -hmm. um, my daughter working remotely, but she works from 3 p.m. to midnight, Wednesday through Saturday, Sunday. Um, because it had to be a shift work on her company. So you worry about them and their, and their concerns about safety. And when I'm out and about, um, they worry a little bit about, am I being safe? But I am, I have my mask and my gloves and you know, I'm, I'm practicing what I'm preaching, lots of physical distancing. So, um, and, and I also think, you know, one of the things I worry for so many of our residents is, is they're, you know, many are busy with their children or their, their spouses. Um, but others are not. And, and what do you do? How do you fill your day when you can't go outside? Um, so in a way, I feel a little fortunate that I have a purpose. I mean, I, I have, I'm busy every single day and I get lots and lots of emails. I try to respond to every single one and phone calls and t text messages and Facebook messages. There's so many different ways to communicate. Um, and it's not always good news when I have to get back to people, but um, I feel I have a purpose and I've got things that are really moving me forward. Um, and for that, I, and I have the support both in the structure of the city and wonderful support from my family to, to, to get through this. It's a really great city. I yeah. love Summit and people are just stepping up. How do you think Summit is going to be? What is it, What are we going to look like in a month from now or six months from now? Well, I'm hard pressed to think that we're going to be a whole lot different a month from now. Mm -hmm. um, Governor Murphy said that one of, his, one of his six benchmarks is doubling the amount of testing and he doesn't predict that can get done until the end of May. Mm -hmm. um, and he doesn't expect to reopen a lot of stuff until that benchmark has been hit. So a month from now, I don't see a whole lot of change. Six months, significant, I think. Um, and you know, we don't, there's so much uncertainty. You don't know, is there a resurgence? Um, will this virus um, mutate? Um, we don't know. But um, 
the this city has always come together. Um, this is just a whole new uh, crisis because it's going on for so long. Um, and, and everyone understands the importance of, of working together, both doing things physically for each other and also financially. So another organization that I thought was terrific is um, SHIELD, which is Summit Helping Its Elderly and Infirm um, by doing deliveries. They have over 150 um, volunteers who are d delivering uh, shopping for groceries and prescriptions for um, senior citizens primarily, and also those who, who are quarantined. Um, the, the Department of Community Programs is get, getting the phone calls, and then they send out um, the information to the SHIELD organizers who then dispatch volunteers to go and do the shopping. And Mark Ozerowski at uh, the Community Programs said that they're getting five to 10 phone calls a day, and they've, wow. they've, served, they've helped well over 50 seniors. Um, there was one couple that called emailed Amy Cairns, our communications chief, and said, you know, we can't get out of the house. My husband's a diabetic. We need alcohol or disinfectant, and we need something else. I, I might have been as, as mundane as, you know, toilet paper or paper towels. Mm -hmm. So I said, Amy, have them call SHIELD, and they did. Um, and then one of the SHIELD um, persons came and did some shopping for them. And it's that kind of stuff that, that we're coming together and helping our neighbors. And the group of people that the women that have organized SHIELD have just launched today, actually, or yesterday, I think today, a new volunteer effort called Summit Volunteer Hub. And it's going to be, it's, it's going to be, it's located on a Facebook page. Mm -hmm. it's, own, it's its own Facebook page, Summit Volunteer Hub. And it's meant to be um, a place where if you want to volunteer, you go there and find out what's, what you can do. And if you need somebody to volunteer for your organization, you go there and, and you can find volunteers. So I think this is something that, will be um, up and running for years to come, is my hope, as a really great place for, because ever since I've been mayor, I hear from people who want to know what they can do in town to help volunteer. And there's lots of opportunities. The problem is trying to find out, you know, what's there, especially if you're new to town. Yeah, so, I agree with you. You know what, even um, before the pandemic, I was looking for volunteer opportunities for Zach because mm -hmm. you have to do certain things for school. And I couldn't, and as, well, as involved as I am and know the town, I still had trouble finding where to volunteer. And I think that with the pandemic, it really shines a light too, that there are so many people who maybe they can't go out and do something, but there's another type of volunteering that they could do. So this, it sounds like this, this Facebook page will give people an opportunity to figure out what's my skill, what do, what do I want to do, and I can, you know, go after that instead of always just doing one thing. Yes, that's the fond hope. So that's been a fantastic opportunity to help physically to help out your neighbor. And then, of course, we launched a couple of weeks ago the Sustained Summit Fund to support small businesses in town. They are, you know, they're our friends. We, we love our, our small businesses and they're the heart and soul of this town. And many of them are applying for federal and state grants and loans, but they're taking time as we, can, we all see. So we launched this fund. It was, um, people could, make, could have, were able to make donations to SDI, which is a 501c3. And I'm happy to say that the check, 150 of our small businesses applied for grants. Um, checks have gone out or going out this week um, to 117 of them in the total amount of $251,000 um, right. and it, ranging from small business, medium, large to extra large. Um, so all locally owned small businesses. And then, um, so people can still donate. Um, it's, we're going to be doing a second round. Uh, we have a goal of 400,000. We raised close to 300. Um, so there's more money that we can distribute to um, the vendors, the, the businesses, and our hope is that they, more of them will apply. Um, because we want to help our small businesses. We want this, then we don't expect this money will answer all their problems, but hopefully it can just tide them over um, until they can get larger funds from the state or federal government. And it also tells them, it shows them how much the summit residents really care for them. Mm -hmm. And it also helps our summit residents, again, an opportunity. So many people kept calling me saying, how can we help our businesses? Um, so it gives people an opportunity to, to um, donate and be supportive. And we raised a lot of money in two short weeks. So I'm, I'm very, very proud of that. Let me ask you this, because I know it's really hard for you. You know a lot of people and a lot of causes, and you don't always want to just pinpoint one person. But is there a certain story or a person that you would like to highlight to say this, this situation encapsulates the amazing community spirit of Summit? Hmm. Well, you know, I, I, 
I don't really know that I can pinpoint any one person, um, but I would say that the the people that encapsulate are the people that have taken the time, and it does take time, and thought and energy to organize these volunteer efforts. So, you know, all of that is a lot of, there were hours and hours of conversation that went on before Sustained Summit Fund was launched. Mm -hmm. I know that the folks initially with Summit Marches On, which morphed into SHIELD, and now they're still talking and coming up with another volunteer organization, right? As I said, Summit Volunteer Hub. So I, I would think those people, but I guess, I guess really, you know, it's, it's, the, it's the essential workers, the people that are out there collecting our trash, yeah. um, working on, on, the, on our properties, um, in the, the landscapers, um, people at City Hall, who, who the Department of Community Services, we didn't shut down. We, um, you come into the City Hall and there's kind of tables that are set up right at the front entrance and then six or eight feet beyond that is a person from the Department of Community Services who is sitting there helping people who are wanting to get a permit, a construction permit, or another kind of permit, or and help with any kind of a license or inspection. So there are about 100 people that have been coming in um, once all week, each week. And the DCS is seated at that, or someone is at that table from uh, 9 to 12. Um, might be 8.30 to 12, but I think it's 9 to 12. And um, they're helping people. We're not shut down. Some towns completely shut down, and we didn't. So you know, good for those workers that they're willing to sit at that table and interact with the public so that we can keep our town going. Um, That's it, it's just heartbreaking to see um, the amount of work that is going on. And then all the folks, the people that are working in, in the stores that are open, uh, the CVS, the, the, the people at, the, at King's and at ShopRite. Um, so, you know, I, I honestly can't say that there is one person that I could single out. There are so many. I don't, everyone's doing something, whether it's for a friend, a neighbor, or a stranger. Right. I, I mean, like you, I can't say one or the other, but I will tell you, our trash collectors, the waste management, they're my heroes. I it's feel cool. like I, I watch them on Monday and Thursday. They pick up the trash and the recycling. And I think to myself, it, I'm just so grateful. And, um, and it, is there a way to thank people like that? Is there just a concerted community effort just to say thank you or? You know what they love, actually? If people would just take the time to write a note, just okay. a note, to the, and, and mail it to City Hall, and it'll get to the Department of Public Works, guys. Um, oh. Some people, once in a while, somebody will bring lunch down. You have to organize it through someone at City Hall because they're scheduled. I think they eat at 1030 in the morning because they start so early. Right. Um, they love notes. And then look at, think about all the first aid squad members. Right there, you know, move, walking into COVID-infected homes all the time. Um, and again, they like to get, you know, food to be brought in here and there. Um, the same thing with notes. And uh, just thank you to be recognized and people understand that we really appreciate everything they're all doing. They're putting their lives on the line for us. Absolutely. And the That's same true. thing, the people with the Summit, um, Summit Downtown Inc., they've put a lot of work into opening up the farmer's market, which will be opened up on um, May 10th, Mother's Day. And um, it'll be different. It's not going to look the same. It's going to be in a different lot. It's not lot one. It'll be a lot of social distancing. It won't be, you know, the, the lovely, warm social event that it always is every Sunday and through the season. Um, maybe over time, we can let up on some of the restrictions. But in the beginning, it will be pretty controlled. But it's a great opportunity to buy fresh food and to be outside. Yeah, I agree. You know what? We go to the grocery store, so I'd much rather be supporting our local farmers and being outside and not having to, you know, be in an enclosed building, right, as it gets warmer. So I think that's a great idea to open it up. I have a question for you because this is your fifth year as mayor because it's yes. your second term. Yes. I mean, one, imagine having this your first term if this had dropped on your lap. On your lap. No. No, um, my, first term, my first term, we had a, a, a week-long closing of roads schools because we had a blizzard in january and i thought that was a lot this would be i i don't it'd be so hard i feel for any elected official who's brand new at this any mayor who's brand new at this job because it helps me so much that city staff and i have a really good um level of trust and and i know so much more that's going on i i didn't know much uh, at all about the inner workings of the city when i first took office it was a learning curve so i'm very well, grateful i was gonna ask you what have you learned that you wouldn't have learned otherwise um, going through such a crazy time with the pandemic. Right. Um, well, I've learned that government workers um, are, are essential, even more than you think they are. Um, it, no one knows what to do without looking to City Hall to give them advice. 
and we are looking to the governor for advice. Um, so, it, but we're at the front line, right? Because people aren't going to call the governor, they're not going to call the president. But so, and, and I have said this in the past, and I, I meant it then, and I mean it even more now, the people who work for Summit really, really care about their jobs. Um, they like to do what they're doing. Um, they work hard at it. And when something goes wrong, they are so concerned and, and interested and willing to work hard to fix it. Um, I also have learned that they don't, they know what they're doing. They know their jobs. And I'm talking about not just Michael Rogers at the top, but I'm also talking about the DPW guys. They know what they have to do. They look to their bosses for, you know, advice and instruction and guidance when it comes to what kind of masks should I wear or this or that, but they know what they have to do. And they're in there ready to do it without a complaint. Um, so that's really been impressive. I've also learned that I knew it before, but I really know it now. Communication is absolutely critical. So I'm happy to have this opportunity to talk to you. Um, and we're still in a world where we have so many different media platforms um, that it's important to get out on social media, on print media, uh, on, on television. Um, it's critical because people look at for information in all different ways. So we have a communications chief that is excellent. And uh, I don't know where we'd be without such a, a wise and, and smart and um, just incredibly uh, energetic communications chief. That's amazing. Do you work with other towns and mayors to, about best practices or what's happening in their town to help each other? To a certain extent, yes. Um, particularly, um, we have a, an open relationship with Westfield and I, and I know what they're doing in Berkeley Heights, um, New Providence to a certain extent. But, you know, it's, it's, there isn't enough time. I, I think it'll be a really important when this is I'm going to say, if not over, but then, you know, a couple of months from now to have, I would love to host a meeting with fellow mayors to go back and look at what we all did. I mean, I have all my emails, all my, all the documents that we can review and say, okay, what could we have done better? What did you do in that situation? I'm focusing on summit right now, um, but we will need to get together. I think it would be very wise to share best practices of, of what happened during this pandemic. Yes. And, you know, as we wrap up, and I hate to let you go, but I know you have a very busy schedule, so I'm grateful that you sat down with me today. Do you have any last words or advice for residents as they are watching this? I would just say try to be patient. Stay the course. I know it's hard, and I really appreciate everyone's doing. And I also appreciate the support that I've received. Um, it means a lot to me. I want to thank everyone. Um, we have a phenomenal town, and uh, we are only going to get through this being stronger and smarter than we were entering it. Well, I could not say that any better. And I just want to thank you so much for your time and your leadership. And I know this is such a hard time. You and the city have been doing such a great job, but um, HTTV is so grateful for all the work you've done. And if there's anything that we can do to support you and the city, you just let us know. Um, and we hope- I that will. Yeah, and you, you say- guys are all, You guys are always there for us. I appreciate it. And uh, I appreciate this too, because as we've said, not everybody you know, is, is, uh, has YouTube. Thank you, Mayor. Have a great day. Thank you, Lisa. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.